Thanks for staying with us. ASU urges government to address university system crisis. This is a hot topic that we're going to discuss right now on the show. Uh, the uh, Lagos Zone of ASU issued a statement on September 29, 2024, reminding Nigerians of a 21-day ultimatum given to the government to resolve issues affecting public universities. These issues include renegotiating the 2009 federal government ASU agreement, releasing withheld salaries, addressing the inefficiencies of IPPIS, funding university revitalization, and addressing the proliferation of new universities. ASU criticized the government's unwillingness to address these concerns and rejected the use of IPPI as in favor of their own Utah's system, which they claim is more efficient. The union also warned that the government's failure to act could lead to another shutdown of public universities. They call on the public and various groups to urge the government to engage with ASU and resolve the ongoing crisis within 14 days. Uh, we're glad now that we're being joined by Professor Adelaja Odukoya. He is the Zonal Coordinator, ASU, Lagos Zone. Good morning and welcome to uh, the program, Professor. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, nice to be here. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, one which is, uh, has not been there since 2009, at least, uh, the proliferation of universities. Let's understand what you mean by that and why it is a problem. Well, thank you very much. The simple way to put it, uh, put it is this. Uh, universities are not just any other institution. They are specialized centers for knowledge and learning and research. And it is not easy, and we must admit that, to fund universities. And universities are actually effective when they receive adequate funding for teaching and research and community development. And the whole idea about a university is not like the ordinary school or any other institution. The whole idea, uh, the uh, concept of university actually stands for a universal platform for knowledge creation. So one university should be as good as another. And that was what our university used to be uh, the University of Ibadan, the University of Lagos, the University of Ifair, in those good old days. I'm so sad when I talk about good old days, it makes us think one is talking about the time of Genesis. I'm just talking about the uh, 70s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. Like, compete favorably with any university in the world. People come from across the globe to study in Nigeria because we have that standard. There's a template, there's a standard. So that's why it is universal. Students, lecturers from across the world come to our country to study because we, our university were the temple of knowledge that they should be because they have the requisite knowledge, the requisite expertise, the requisite library, the requisite instruments and equipment and things like that. But with what we have with proliferation of universities, our universities have been turned to uh, an undistributed commodity like a pure water. That is getting to a state that almost every every local government or senatorial district now will have a university, thus denying the university, the existing university, of their vitality. That's why we have the problem of funding. That's why we have the problem of brain drain. That's why the problem of uh, we are no longer globally competitive. That's why it is difficult to find more than one or two or three universities of, uh, in Nigeria in the global ranking of universities and. Our universities are fast becoming glorified secondary schools based on this proliferation. So when we talk about proliferation, we are talking about a situation whereby our universities are actually being politicized. They are being turned to consistency projects everywhere and every corner. Our politicians are establishing universities. And this is actually not helping the development of this country. Thank you. Okay, a lot of arguments will come from the people who say that in a country where we have over 200 million people, uh, the existing universities cannot cater to the needs of uh, the uh, teeming population of Nigeria. And that's why they're thinking that everywhere, every corner, there should be a university. So that's why I had to ask this question so that people don't begin to feel that ASU is being selfish or the, the experts or the um, academia, they're being selfish because uh, universities are springing up. 
uh, the existing universities, how is it possible uh, to accommodate the, the teaming population, for instance, to answer the questions of the people who are feeling that we need more universities? Uh, thank you so much. And the first, first thing, let me repeat again, university is not about quantity, it's about quality. Then having said that, uh, about us being selfish, more, uh, the more the university, the more, the more members you will get. So the issue of selfish is actually, as it's been patriotic. Uh, so that's that. Then again, it is not about uh, quantity, it's about access. You see, when you duplicate university, you are replicating, when you proliferate university, you are replicating uh, existing structures and systems. Uh, for every university, you have a DC, you have uh, you have a registrar, you have a uh, DBC. We have every everything should be create those departments. Such money could be used to expand the facility and ability to absorb more students from all this facility uh, for the existing university, and we'll still be able to maintain the quality and, and content of this university. So, what Africa is actually saying is actually that we can get in more students to our university where we deepen, where we fund this university, such that this university can take in more students, can do more research can be more globally competitive. What's the, what's the need of having a degree that is not what is not better than the paper on which it is written? So we are saying, stop creating university every corners. Fund the existing university. Expand, uh, expand their capacity. Deepen their ability to, uh, to for teaching and research, such that this uh, can have more students. In, uh, for example, now University of Lagos, uh, has a, let's say we have about 60,000 students. When you give them more funds, uh, we have more uh, facilities. We can take 120, we can take 200. As a matter of fact, in Unilab, we probably have uh, the distant learning uh, institute with over 50,000 students. You can deepen all this by putting money there in the existing university rather than just spreading white and time. And you are not achieving anything. So, what ASU is proposing is actually a model that will actually make sure that the existing university has capacity to take more students, do more research, do more teaching, uh, teaching and be globally competitive, globally relevant. And the products of this university are top notch and they will be able to go anywhere in the world for, and own their own. And again, they will be the pride of industry. That's what we are saying. And that's not what we have with what the government is doing. Okay. Uh, well, let's move to the other items that uh, bring in the bone of contention, uh, the um, IPPS and all that. Uh, Utah's IPPS, uh, what's the difference? What makes uh, Utah's better than IPPS, first of all? We know that this, this problem has come, uh, uh, has been there for a very, very long time, the, all the complaints that ASU is giving. But let's just address this one before we talk generally about others that you're talking about. Uh, thank you so much. IPPIS, simply said, uh, is evil. It's, uh, it's a structure of corruption. And we've said that before, and it has been proven. Uh, what is his name now? The former accountant general that was the champion, uh, was the, uh, the, uh, the, the apostle of IPPIS, uh, was alleged, and uh, the case is still in court. And we don't know what's happening to it. Uh, over 100 and, 100 and, 119 billion was supposed to be missing. Uh, we've seen cases in the newspaper about ghost workers, corruption, and things like that. A lot of things. People have used the IPP. And of course, uh, so the IPP, and of course, we have been justified. Those who, have, uh, who were saying when we all just started that you can't dictate to your employer how to be paid and things like that, we are not hearing them again. We are, we are not dictating. As intellectual, we are the conscience of the nation. And we have the duty to alert government, to alert the country when we know something is going to go wrong or something is going on. That's what we did. So, IPPIS uh, is actually simply a violation of the university autonomy. It does not represent and it does not recognize all how the university works. For instance, now, because of this IPPIS, and it's regrettable that since December last year, this is eight months, uh, almost ten months after, uh, the government realizing it's its mistake has actually asked that universities and other similar institutions should exist from ICC IPPI. But because from, uh, they are, you, are, you have some bureaucratic and some other beneficiaries from the system, they've not done it up to now. So IPP, uh, the, uh, the university works in a special way. As a dean, I'm a dean of a faculty. I can see you just like we are talking, and I discover you have a special skill. Bring it to the university. But what we have now is that for us to employ the university, you have to go to Abuja to get approved. I can tell you for free. 
In my faculty, for instance, there are several departments that are having less than 30% of their staff complement, uh, academics complement. That's why the rate of death within the university system have, have, have risen. So the university is a special place. It's not, it's not, it's not like a, a civil service. You can go anywhere and have people so. You can subject, and it's in the, our 2009 agreement, that the university cannot be subjected to the law, the memos, the, uh, the pathologies of the civil service or the public service orientation. But that's what we're having. So the, uh, the uh, UTAS on its own, uh, it's a product of, uh, of the challenge, just like we developed, uh, we gave the government the whole idea about the uh, third fund, formerly Education Trust Fund, where we had uh, some pro or a, pro uh, a strike uh, during the Bangida era and we were challenged to, uh, okay, how do we get the fund? That's the same way we were challenged. And if you say IPPIS is bad, what is the alternative? And we came up with UTAS. It was tested and it, uh, with other this thing, it was the best. Yet, there might be things to, uh, to be fine tuned, but it was the best. 100 times better than IPPIS. And the reports are there, they could not release it. So, the UTAS on its own recognize the peculiarity of the university system. And uh, while actually still allaying the fears of government about corruption, about whatever they want to do, without compromising the university integrity, without compromising the way the university works. Now, IPPS have virtually destroyed our university. Uh, a lot of people have chakra, a lot of our lecturers are... Uh, uh, people are being hold promotional areas for, for, uh, way back to, to 2019, 2018. The universities have uh, become glorified era boys. They get memos, they run to Abuja to get, to get more little things done. These are the kind of things we were talking about, and that's the difference. Okay. Under you trust, which <coughs> must develop at no cost to the government. At no cost to the government. All this nonsense will not happen. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, so now to the crux of the matter, but as briefly as possible, you, give, you, gave, you drew our attention on the 29th of September to the 21-day ultimatum, I think, and now you're still talking about um, giving some more time to the government, after which we don't know what happened. So walk us through that, uh, what has been going on um, after the end or the expiration of this new ultimatum that you're giving to the government, what happens? Uh, thank you so, for so much. First and foremost, let me say, yeah, the ultimatum is because we are a patriotic union and we can't fold our hands and allow the university system to be destroyed. But for our union, our universities will have become just like what uh, our primary schools and secondary schools have been turned to. Uh, the ultimatum is necessary because we are, follow, we are, we are, we are lawful uh, union. We are following the law. That's what the trade act says. Uh, we, are, uh, we are giving another 14 days ultimatum. Because, yeah, we have had meetings, uh, but it's just like motion without movement. Uh, there have been nothing on the table. The government has not shown any seriousness. The government has not shown any intentionality that is in, intent to solve this problem. And regrettably, uh, the former, uh, the present chief of staff was, uh, was part of the people that actually broke uh, uh, the, the, uh, the head of the other side. And the, our union met not less than twice or twice with the president during that strike as uh, a group between. But that, so they understood the issue, and we knew what the problem is then. So if by now they are not doing anything, we ask them what has changed. Is it because they are now in power? Is uh, they not part of the problem they said they were going to solve? So we we'll follow the law through. And again, why we are doing all we have been doing is to say uh, the Nigerian people should hold the government responsible. Because with all the, uh, the U.S. system has become stable, uh, based on the sacrifice of our members after that strike. We've been working, and all our universities are stable, and the government seems to be determined, sadly, too, uh, to plunge the university system into another afford affordable uh, uh, strike action. This, is, this will be most regrettable. So we are equally using this uh, forum to appeal to the Nigerians, to appeal to the government to do the needful and keep our university from the strike action that it is most unnecessary. Thank you. Okay, so um, since you've been discussing with the government and all that, uh, what really has the government promised that they're not fulfilling now? You're talking about renegotiation and all that. Uh, the agreement was reached in 2009. We've been practically it's not in begging. Thing. That's what we're saying. Yes. There is not a, it's just a, a tale of lamentation. If, we have, if the government had made any, uh, 
you see, from history, you discover that our union actually not a rigid union. There has never been any time when we go on strike and we were able to have everything. We we, we get some things and we have some promises uh, uh, based on uh, what we perceive as the sincerity of the government. We were always and ever ready to invest our trust in a government that, that over the years proved untrustworthy. But uh, even now, there's not so you do, there's even nothing to hold on to that you can say, okay, let's even say based on this, we want to go back, and that's why we are doing what we are doing. Thank you. Okay, so uh, renegotiation involves what the 2009 agreements. We've known the, all the things that uh, you requested for. So renegotiation. How? Where will you meet the, uh, the government halfway? Where? Where? At what point do you intend to compromise to? Uh, by the time you talk about meeting the government halfway, it's as if the government has put something on the table. Nothing on the table, that's what we are saying. I've told you that we have had, uh, we have, uh, had an history of, uh, of disappointment from government, but yet, as a patriotic union, as academics, as scholars that are committed to what we are doing, we have always been ready to invest our trust but there should be something to want to trust. There's nothing. I'm talking about the 2009 agreement. It will interest you that the first and the most, uh, the first thing about the 2009 agreement is to say that, uh, we negotiated that. The salary we negotiated that we agreed upon in 2009, which was equivalent to $3,000 or there about then, is still what we are having now. And as of today, given the, uh, the erosion of the value of the Naira, they have a professor earns about two hundred dollars per month. Does that what does or does that not speak to us that there's an urgent need? There's a danger of imminent disrupt, total destruction of not just the university system but of the, our academics, our nation intellig intelligentsia. That's one. We need to really, uh, so that's one. Even the argument that was signed uh, that was prepared by the uh, Bridge Committee in two thousand uh, twenty-one. What was agreed has become useless. And so that's why. There's equally the issue of funding the university system. That has not been done. And, the, uh, and all, all, all these other issues. So we are ready, we are always willing, despite historical disappointment, like I've said, to meet the government. But the government is not even ready to meet us in terms of putting up a viable proposal, saying what, showing goodwill. One cardinal principle of negotiation is goodwill. Show goodwill, show commitment. And it is sad that this is not about, uh, about any other thing, it's about education. Education determines everything in the country. One, the health, two, uh, even the technology. Three, all this. Okay, um, that, be, be, before we run out of time, let me just uh, understand this. Uh, we, we talk about the autonomy of the universities, and uh, a lot of people do not understand why universities will always be crying for funding when they, are, that sh they should be able to generate the funds to run the universities. That's one. And secondly, when you talk about the fact that uh, lecturers earn so little, I'm, I'm curious to know whether... This minimum wage that has been um, agreed upon will not have a meaningful effect on the salary structure of the lecturers. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, talking about autonomy uh, and why universities should be asking for funding all over the world, US, UK, U the whole of Europe, everywhere. There is nowhere government don't fund university. Even private university gets funds from government abroad, so people should get that right. Mm. And two. When people say, uh, yes, universities should be able to generate their fund. Yes, that's perfect. But there is a caveat to it. When you want to start a business, when you want a, a business to be productive, you inject money in it, even in the private sector. What we have been crying over the years is that government is not injecting money in our universities. We have laboratory. What we did need assessment before was done. You see laboratory without uh, rejects. You see computer department without computers. So... They are state-of-the-art equipment that we need. You must provide these things. You must fund them. You must support them. That's why we say you cannot be polyvalent you ask. Why are you on, on, if you cannot fund what you have? Why are you establishing more? We are saying fund what you have so that we can attract. If, when we attract even foreign students, 
Every university in the world use foreign students to supplement because you charge them uh, in dollars. Yes. In dollars. But we, nobody's coming there. Not even from Benin uh, Republic. Our people are going there. So that's a sad reality. So if you want your business to try, if you want something to be productive, even your chicken at home, if you are this, you feed them well. That's what we are saying. So it is only when they can stand on their own that you can say, oh, you are, uh, uh, we leave you on your own. And there is no way in the world. Even okay. South Africa, I can count within my university, not less than 20 of our, our scholars, our members that are in South Africa, based on federal or their government scholarship. Aren't we ashamed? We call ourselves giants of Africa. We are people giants. We are no giants. We are paper giants. So those are the issues. Mm. Okay, so minimum wage, as we wrap up, this is the final one. Yeah, minimum wage, what does it have? The consequential adjustments have been have, out. Uh, a professor will be lucky to have 40,000 naira difference. <laughs> you see, we have, uh, I started by saying the university is universal. If you want your uh, professor, your academia, your scholars to perform like their counterpart, you must be ready to pay them. And you see, because it, uh, this is the only professor, uh, profession you have, uh, you, uh, that you need to have a PhD to do. And with a PhD, you are a global citizen. That's why we are having this Japa all over the place. So, minimum wage is not. That's why we say we are not public servants. As a matter of fact, we are uh, at a point in time in this country, and God bless uh, Allah country last year, for his recent article. You see the statistics there. About what is not, was not in that article is to say that in 1960 at independence, the only person that earned more than the university professor was the prime minister. And he was earning 800 pounds. Hey, what kind of nonsense? 800 pounds more than uh, uh, the prime minister was earning 800 pounds more than the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan. And no other person, uh, then the next person that earns more than a professor was the, uh, was the chief justice of, of the federation that was earning 3,600 pounds. And a professor was earning three thousand pounds, but with with the military, with this uh, bureaucrats, with uh, conspiracy, the whole thing changed because these people have a pathological hatred for knowledge and scholarship. Because these people are not equally interested in developing this country. Those are the issues. So for uh, for the, uh, for the university, for the academia, it is not about minimum wage. Okay. The university is a special center. Okay. And, People treat university globally, especially. Mm. Oh, well, um, I, I know that uh, the government is listening right now, and I do hope that they can avert this. Uh, we don't want to go into another strike. I know people who, want to, who went to, uh, who have been to school. Who not, or not they are, away from grooming. There are people in school that were supposed to graduate like two years ago because of COVID, because All of, of them this. Are so it's a, work. it's a problem now. Uh, so, but well, pain, yeah, discomfort to yeah, we'd like to thank you, Professor uh, Odukoya, for coming on the show. This uh, it's a developing thing. We don't hope that you don't go on strike, but we might have to call you back another time to give us uh, an we update of what is happening. Go on strike. I'll be ready and willing to be with you. All right, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we've been talking with Professor Adela Jaudukoya, a zonal coordinator of ASU Lagos Zone, and we'll be looking at ASU's warning that if the government doesn't do the needful, they might go on a strike again. We don't want that to happen. We do hope government will do something about it. We'll take a short break and return uh, with our next guest that we'll be talking about. They, uh, um, they protest yesterday. Stay with us.